So you wanna get out into the outdoors, but you have no idea what equipment you really need. Stay tuned. I'm Alexander Ayling, and I have over 20 years going on backpacking trips, camping, and adventures in the great outdoors. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you my absolute essentials, minimalist backpacking equipment gear list. Now, if you're new here, please make sure to give that subscribe button a click. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any tips of your own, share them down there in the comment section. Additionally, I will be linking all of the equipment featured in this video down there in the description box. These are affiliate links, so uh, I will make a small percentage on each sale, but by no means is this video sponsored. I haven't been paid by any of these companies. These are just products that I've used and like and recommend to you. Okay. Let's get into the video. My first piece of essential equipment is a sleeping bag. I know that that sounds pretty basic, but you'd be surprised how unprepared people are when they go into the great outdoors. And a sleeping bag is your most essential piece of equipment. It's so easy to get cold and then get hypothermic, and then next thing you know, you're in trouble. A good sleeping bag will help you avoid that, and it'll also help you get a good night's sleep, which, let's be real, is so important. Because if you're not sleeping well, you're probably in a bad mood, and nobody wants to be around somebody in a bad mood, especially in the great outdoors. So fix all of those problems by getting a good sleeping bag. Now, there's essentially two different ways you can go here. You can go down or you can go synthetic. Now, what's the difference between the two? Essentially, down is nature's best insulator. It's the little bit of plumage right next to the body of birds like geese and ducks. So, down, it has a higher weight to warmth ratio. It weighs less, but it's warm. It's also very compressible, which means you can stuff it into your backpack so you have more space for more <laughs> you probably don't need. But stay tuned because in this video, we'll help you only bring the things that you actually need. And finally, it's very durable. It's gonna last longer, which is why it's more expensive. The cons are as follows. You get it wet, it loses its insulation factor, and it's also more difficult to dry. And the biggest con of all is that it is more expensive. Have I said that already? And the last con is that down probably had to be plucked down of a goose somewhere and the goose probably didn't enjoy it if it's still around to say anything but at least it's not foie gras moving on to synthetic pros it continues to insulate even when wet which means if you trip and fall on your river crossing and your backpack gets soaked that night even though you're gonna shiver your ass off you're not gonna die it's hypoallergenic which means if you have allergies to goose feathers you're not gonna be sneezing or have an allergic reaction which is great because allergic reactions in the great outdoors are not good. And then finally, it's less expensive than down. Yay! Don't we all love that? It's less expensive. And especially with inflation the way it is right now, less expensive is a good thing. Cons! It's heavier and bulkier. But honestly, it's not that much heavy. It offers less warmth for weight ratio. Less durable than down, which means each time you take your backpack and you stuff it into that stuff sack, it's actually getting less warm. What? It's getting less warm? Yeah, believe it. Which is another reason why you should store your sleeping bag not in a compression sack. But at the end of the day, it really just comes down to what you prefer. So what do you prefer? Let me know in the comment section down there, down or synthetic. My next piece of essential equipment is an inflatable air mattress. Way better than one of those wannabe yoga mat type mattresses because those things are from like the 80s. Don't use those. You're just gonna end up with a rock right in the middle of your back. You're gonna get a horrible night's sleep. You're gonna be cranky and nobody likes cranky people, okay? So avoid that by getting a good inflatable air mattress. I stand by the brand Thermarest. They make the best ones. I've had a Thermarest for as long as I can remember. They keep getting smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter every single year. They come in different sizes for how tall you are. And when I get to camp, and I set up my tent, because I do prefer to sleep in a tent, I just <laughs> blow that, chuck my sleeping bag on top, and then the last thing, my inflatable pillow. Do not bring your pillow from your bed back home. You're gonna take up your whole backpack with a pillow. Look, I know pillows are important, but you'll be like that person at the airport carrying a pillow through security, and you just look at him and say, what are you doing? Why are you in your pajamas? So save yourself the embarrassment 
and get yourself an inflatable pillow. They stuff down into nothing. So small, but make such a big difference. Next up, shelter. We need shelter out there in the wild. You can go really basic here if you want. All you really need is a tarp. And if you don't have a tarp, you could build shelter, like in the days of old. And trust me, there's plenty of YouTube channels out there that are all about survival, and they'll show you how to build a really simple A-frame shelter or all sorts of really complicated ones, or tree houses, or Ewok homes. Honestly, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that people out there can build with an ax or just a knife. Simplest way to have shelter in the wild is just to bring a tarp with a little bit of paracord, which is like parachute cord. You can use it for everything. And if you don't bring it, there'll be multiple opportunities where you say, damn, I wish I had some paracord. You set up your little tarp shelter, you put your sleeping bag underneath, make sure that you bring a ground mat. Ground mat will help you not puncture your inflatable air mattress. I would suggest you bring a bivy. A bivy is essentially like a condom for your sleeping bag. No, it's probably more like a rain jacket for your sleeping bag. It essentially helps keep the dew off of your bag. Now, if it's a clear night out and you know it's not gonna rain, you can sleep under the stars with just the bivy sack on top of your sleeping bag. And it's a wonderful experience. And if you haven't tried that, definitely give that a shot. Now, if you want a little bit more comfort, get a tent. I love MSR tents. They make some of the best ones. And one that I've used my whole life is called the Hubba. Now, uh, I have a Hubba one-person tent which I've used on bikepacking trips and really, really enjoy, as well as lots of backpacking trips in the mountains of California. Uh, and then I, when I got married, I bought a two-person hubba for my wife and I, and that is actually big enough for our dog, Lanka, to sleep in there with us as well. So these are lightweight backpacking tents. They do run fairly expensive though, so if you're really on a budget, just use the minimalist hack and just use the tarp, the ground cloth, and a bivy sack. Okay, next up, let's talk backpacks. Super important, because how are you gonna carry all this gear? You're not gonna put it into a tote bag. Do not put it into a tote bag, okay? Trust me, that would be a really bad idea. Your arm would fall off, and then that's when, you know, the mountain lions and the bears come for you, because they're like, oh, it's another one of those tote bag idiots. Trust me, you need a backpack. Now, what type of backpack is a personal preference. In the last video I did about camping equipment, I shared that I purchased an 88 liter backpack. What? I know, it's huge, but it's because I film videos for a living and take photos for a living, so I have to bring all this camera gear on top of all of my outdoor equipment. And in California, you need a bear box, which is just a giant plastic canister that takes up your entire backpack, so I needed a bigger bag. For most people, 60 liters is more than sufficient. Now, I know that there'll probably be some people here who are like, I pack all my stuff in a 20 liter miniature day bag, dude, and you're an idiot. Yeah, okay, I get it, congratulations. But for the rest of us, 60 liters is probably the right number. Now, there are plenty of brands that make great bags. I've used Osprey, I've used REI, and I've used Gregory. Kelty is another company that makes good bags. Those are kind of like your traditional backpack makers. There's some new brands out there that make these minimalist backpacks, these Hyperlite backpacks. Hyperlite is one of those brands and Z-Pack is another. I've never used any of those minimalist bags so I can't really vouch for whether or not they're good or not. I just know that they don't have many stuff sacks or pockets. It's pretty much just that main backpack cavity and then everything goes in there. If you've used those more minimal style backpacks, please let everybody know down in the comment section what you think about them. A good tip before you purchase your backpack is to try it on. I would suggest you go down to your local outdoors equipment store and try backpacks on. And then if you find one that you like, that fits, here's the hack. Go online on your phone, search the exact name of the backpack, find a cheaper price than the one that they have, and then have them sell it to you using that price. And if they don't, then you just buy it from the online retailer and you already know that it fits. You can thank me later. Next up, cooking, because food is good, man. And food's even better when you're in the great outdoors. Cooking should not be that challenging. I really just stand by the brand Jet Boil. It's essentially a little canister. You connect the gas onto the bottom. It burns super hot and boils water in an instant. 
and most of the time I'm eating dehydrated food, so I just measure out how much water I need, boil it up in the jet boil, put it into the bag, leave the bag to rehydrate, and then maybe pour a little bit more water in there and have a cup of coffee or a tea while I wait, because drinking hot drinks in the great outdoors is what it's all about, people. And then, yeah, by the time you're done with your cup of tea or your coffee, your meal is ready, and there you go. Now you can cook over an open fire, but you gotta check beforehand whether or not you can have a fire because lots of places nowadays have fire restrictions due to the fact that forest fires are pretty damn common now, and oftentimes they're started by careless campers. So don't be one of those people check before you go, and if you do have a fire, keep it really under control, all right? Also, regarding food on your backpacking trip, it's a good idea to bring things that last, and also to bring options, because you don't wanna just eat dehydrated food for all the days and nights of your camping trip. You will get really over it, and so will your bowels. Okay, so bring real food, eat that in the beginning of the trip, and then slowly transition, once you've run out of options, to dehydrated food. Man, I wish this... <sighs> the tripod only goes to here, so this whole video, I've had to film it, like, in a squat. This is leg day. Next up, a spork. It's a spoon and a fork combined. I'm a spork. It's that thing that you used to get at your school lunches with the sloppy joes. I made them extra sloppy for you. You've used a spork before, you just forgot about it. Now it's time to remember, because sporks make two things one, which means one less thing you have to bring, which means a lighter backpack. Obviously you're gonna need a good knife. You don't need a freaking Bowie knife. That's a knife. You don't need a machete. Really, you just need a good pocket knife that will serve its purpose. Now if you wanna have a knife with like a million different tools, get a leather then. Now you can get a cookery set. I have the cookery set from MSR. I really like it. It has two different, like, what are those things called? Pots. I bought a cookery set from MSR. I love it, I've used it for years. Everything packs into itself. It has two different pots. It has two little cups with lids, so you don't, you know, burn yourself. It has two plates and all of that fits into itself. Next up, fire. You really need to make sure that you have a few different fire sources. You don't wanna go into the wild with just one lighter that you probably used for a long time doing things you shouldn't have done. Smoking. And then you don't even know how much lighter fluid's left in the thing. Get a new lighter before you go, and then also bring some waterproof matches because if everything gets wet or if your lighter breaks, your shit out of luck, as they say. So bring a couple of different options. I like to bring a lighter, waterproof matches, and then a fire stick, which is really, really fun to play with. Next up, water filtration. I wish we could just go out into the great outdoors, stick our little mouths into a stream, and slurp up that sweet, crisp, clear, clean water. But unfortunately, that's not really how it works anymore because we have left Eden, people. Guess what? you're gonna have to filter your water because if you don't, you might get a little bug called Giardia, which is here to mess up your life a long time. It's gonna give you diarrhea. Diarrhea! Not fun. You can avoid it very simply by filtering your water. You can filter your water in a lot of different ways. If you don't have any water filtration systems, then you can just boil water, but you need to leave it. It needs to be at a roaring boil for a couple of minutes at least to kill off most of that bacteria. The best way to do it is just to get a gravity system. I like these uh, because it's really simple. It's like set and forget. Put the water in one bag, hang that bag higher, connect it to the clean bag. The water comes down via gravity through the filter into the bag, fills up the clean bag. Super simple to use. The most minimal way though is just to use iodine tablets. I'm not a big fan because it tastes bad. Gross. If you do use iodine tablets, bring some like Gatorade powder or something to scoop into your water so it doesn't taste like I also bring like a water bottle. I'm a fan of this one from Hydro Flask because plastic ones are not good because they have all sorts of weird things floating around, free radicals. Free radicals, sir? Bad stuff for your body, man. So use a metal one. And then I also have a platypus water reserve. 
so that uh, if I need to get water from the source and then I have to take water with me, because oftentimes there's not good reliable water sources all along the entirety of the hike, so you'll need to bring water with you. Getting a little platypus is a good call. I'd say about three liters is ideal. And if you're in bear country, God save you. No, I'm just kidding. Bring a bear canister. Uh, you can hire these from your local ranger's office, but you can also just buy them, especially if you're gonna be going often. Buying your own will inevitably pay for itself because you don't want a bear in your camp in the middle of the night. It's not fun waking up in the middle of the night and hearing grunting noises from a bear outside of your tent because you put all your food in your tent and the bear smelt it all and it's like, I want dehydrated noodles. I'm coming in. So avoid that situation by getting a bear canister, storing all of your food or scented things like, you know, lip balm or wet wipes even. Just put everything that smells and is scented into that canister and hike five minutes away from your tent and leave it out there. All right, let's talk about clothing. I'm gonna wear, well, I'm gonna use my capsule wardrobe. I want Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Prada. When you're in the great outdoors, clothing should be practical first and foremost. You guys just don't look cool. And as much as I love cotton, it's not ideal for being in the outdoors. Why? Because when you sweat, it gets wet and cotton does not dry quickly or efficiently and you also lose your heat through that. So I love merino wool base layers. Smart wool makes the best in my opinion. Why merino wool? Because it wicks sweat and it dries very quickly. Plus it's wool so it's good at insulating. So what I usually do is I wear a whole base layer. So it'll be a long sleeve merino wool shirt and then also long sleeve merino leggings. I use those in camp like at night when I'm gonna go to sleep. Pretty much just bring like one day shirt, like a long sleeve, quick dry shirt. And if it's cold, I'll wear the thermal underneath it. If it's hot, I'll just wear the shirt, roll up the sleeves. That can be easily washed. So you could just take a little bit of like Dr. Bronner's, for example, or Camp Suds, drop one or two little drops on that and wash it out. Also, your pants should be the same kind of quick dry material. That way, if you've had a big long day on the trail and you're sweaty and you're gross, you can get into camp you can wash yourself, you can wash your clothes, and then you can hang your clothes up to dry overnight and then change into your camp clothes. So I like to have hiking clothes and camp clothes, and that's it. Wool socks, and if you're gonna be on a really long trail, sock liners. In the mountains, weather changes quickly. It could be sunny one moment, it could be pissing rain the next. So you wanna be prepared for that and a good rain jacket is a must. Then a puff, a mid-layer. These are great. Patagonia, in my opinion, makes the best because they are guaranteed for life. If they rip, you send them in, they'll fix it for you. I like the Nano Puff with a hood. A good mid-layer jacket as well uh, is really important. I have this one from Arcteryx and I really like it. And I'll wear that underneath my puff if it's cold at night. And if it's really cold, I'll put the long sleeve merino wool, the mid-layer, the puff, and then the rain jacket with a beanie. And if it gets any colder than that, I'm in my sleeping bag in the tent. A buff neck guard, a good hat, and a beanie for when it cools off at night. And then ex officio quick dry underwear. They claim you can wear these underwear for a few days in a row without washing them. You can, but it's gross. I would suggest you just wash them each night. I bring two pairs. They are super lightweight. One for the trail, one for camp. Sunscreen, I would suggest you bring a new bottle. Bug repellent, in case the mosquitoes decide they love you. Anti-itch cream, hydrocortisone. This is good for if you get stung or if you get a rash or if your skin just starts deciding to freak out. Hydrocortisone is your friend. And if you get really stressed and get hemorrhoids, it'll take care of that too. Biodegradable wilderness wipes, for when things get swampy downstairs. A roll of toilet paper in a plastic bag and a little trowel to dig yourself a nice little poo hole. Don't shit on the trail, people. Dig a hole, go in the hole, bury it. Maybe even put a rock on it so some little grazing animal doesn't make the mistake of saying, oh, what's that? Dig their little face into your pile. Take care of it the right way. Also, never go to the bathroom within 200 meters of a stream or a water source because it will leach down into the water and then you'll give Giardia to some other backpacker. Ah! 
So let's all protect each other here, not go to the bathroom near water sources. Thank you. Baby powder is also good. It's not an essential, but like, if you want that comfort at the end of the day, baby powder your ball. Neosporin for treating scrapes, cuts, and scratches. Mole skin for stopping blisters from getting worse because if you ever tried to hike with a gigantic blister, then you understand how painful it can become. Let's blister this asshole. And if it gets infected, it can get even worse. A toothbrush and a little bit of toothpaste. Just get the little travel one. If you already have an old toothbrush and you're like, I don't wanna go buy a new one. Well, you can just cut the end off of it. Make sure it's long enough that you can reach those back molars and you're good to go. And then finally, a couple of big Ziploc bags for packing out any trash that you make when you're hiking or any trash that you find because it's always a good idea to take other people's trash if they've left it we all own the great outdoors together so we got to protect it together so pack out trash if you find it and having a couple of ziplocs that you can just stuff all of those wrappers in is a really good way to do that finally some miscellaneous stuff bring a map of the area that you are going to explore topographical maps which show the elevation and the layout of the land it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with an area beforehand your cell phone and a, maybe a small solar battery charging unit a garmin inreach is a great option it is a gps unit it has a button on it that you can press if you need to be rescued and it can also send messages, like text messages. If you wanna preserve battery on your phone and it's cold outside, do not leave your phone in your backpack because it's gonna get really cold and then it's gonna sap all your battery. So put your phone, turn it off and put it in your sleeping bag because it'll stay warm and that will help preserve the battery longer. A candle, I know it sounds weird. You don't need to bring like a giant candle, like you bring this but uh, a small bit, like even if you just cut off that much, a little bit of wax wrapped in toilet paper is a great way to start a fire if you're having trouble or you're struggling, all you have is wet wood and you don't have good kindling or tinder, you can start a fire using a little bit of wax, candle wax wrapped up in toilet paper. Okay friends, well that's pretty much it. Those are my tips for minimalist but essential equipment. I know oftentimes people are like, you don't need all that. Look, I'm just trying to cover all the bases to make sure that people are safe and comfortable. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, let's change that. Hit the subscribe button. I don't know where it is, but hit it. If you have any tips of your own or you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. And once again, all the gear that I've mentioned here is linked down there in the description box. Okay, have a great day. Enjoy your time in the great outdoors and we will we'll talk soon. Let me know how it went. Peace.